Professor Horror. Scary Stories. It was the summer of 2016 and I just married my longtime girlfriend. Over the course of our 12 year relationship, we had traveled to the mountains several times in both summer and winter for camping, but also to stay in the nice mountain hotels and snowboard the slopes. Naturally, we had both agreed that this is how we wanted to spend the first few weeks of our marriage. We booked a 20 day stay at a mountainside campground on the other side of the country. We also decided to bring our dogs with us as they too love being outdoors and we generally bring them camping anyway. After two days of road tripping, we had arrived, quickly set up and settled in for a good long stay on the mountain. It was beautiful. A couple days into our trip and we had already met a bunch of fellow campers. We are very experienced campers, so we generally attract a lot of attention from novice campers asking for tools or supplies, as they see that we are well set up. We are usually more than happy to help people get situated, if they need matches, cream or sugar, or help setting up their equipment. It was day 4 or 5 when she first made her presence known to us. I will refer to this person as she or her, as we never learned her name. We were sitting down under the shade of a large pine tree, at the edge of our sight, drinking beers and playing cards when she seemingly appeared out of nowhere. She was just suddenly right there. Can I pet your dog? She said. Even my dog didn't see her approach, as the very sound of her voice triggered them into a startled frenzy. As the dogs were worked up already, I politely told her no. Then she just stood there, at the edge of her sight. Didn't say a word. Just stood there, sort of existing, but not really doing anything. She wasn't exactly staring at us or looking at anything in particular. I asked her if she needed anything and she said no. After a few minutes, she walked off. I work with people with brain injuries, so I've had my fair share of experiences with unusual behaviors, including people with poor social skills. So I wasn't about to write this person off as creepy just yet, but she had my attention. I casually watched her walk off and enter a campsite across the path and a few sites down from ours. There was already a small tent set up on the site, but she proceeded to pull an even smaller single person tent from her backpack and began setting it up. The day prior, we saw two young girls set up the other tent and were clearly the occupants of the site. There was no further interaction with her that day, although we did notice that the owners of the other tent on the site were not around at all that day, and we didn't see them return that night. Well, the next morning I was walking to the camp showers to clean up for the day. As I walk past her site, I see she is sitting in her a little tent reading a book. The door to the tent is open. I pay no attention and keep on my way to take my shower. When I'm done with my shower and walk back, I notice her tent is closed but is jiggling about so I know someone is in there. Then she made her presence known in a big way. Just as I am approaching her side on the way to mine, she unzips her tent and I immediately see that she is completely nude. She then positions herself just inside the tent at the door, lets out this over the top full body stretch and held her arms way up to the sky while pushing her chest forward like it was some kind of mating ritual designed just for me. While she does this, she lets out what I can only describe as an exotic moan. It was pretty obvious she was putting on a show for me. I continue on my way to my site and tell my wife about the display I had just been witness to. We both laughed it off and moved on with our plans to day hike a good trail to a waterfall. The trailhead for this hike was accessible from the campground so we didn't have to drive to get there. We just walked the additional two kilometers to the trail. We walked at a good pace so when we got to the trail we decided to stop for a few minutes, take some photos of the surrounding mountains before heading into the thicker bush. After sitting there for maybe five minutes while my wife is taking pictures, she emerges from the trail that leads towards the campground. At first I thought, okay, coincidence, she's staying here and this is a pretty common trail. But then she sees that I see her and she stops dead in her tracks and just stands there. Same demeanor as our first encounter. Just standing, not doing anything in particular, but also sending creep vibes our way. This was the first time I said to my wife, I think we have a stalker. Confused, my wife then looks to where I'm looking and is immediately a little creeped out. Once again, I think whatever maybe she's had just hiking the trail, it's no big deal. So, we continue on the trail at a good pace and she maintains a consistent distance behind us. Our dogs at this point are a little distracted by her, and our youngest dog keeps turning around to watch her. I got a little fed up with the dog constantly stopping to look back, so I decided we will stop for some water and just let the woman pass. Well, what does she do but fucking stop walking when we stop and once again just stands there? 
Okay, so now we are generally concerned because this is approaching horror slash suspense movie creep level, and I started to wonder what the girl's intentions were. Standing motionless at a distance and refusing to pass us just ramped up the oh shit factor to about nine. So my wife and I agreed just give her and cut the hike short by taking the shorter loop, which was only maybe another half kilometer ahead, and head back to the camp. We managed to get some distance between us by jogging every time we would make a turn, and she was out of sight. We didn't see her again until later that night. That night, my wife decided to take an evening shower at the camp showers. When she returned to our camp, she tells me our stalker was in the bathrooms, also taking a shower. This time, however, she was with two other girls and appeared to be getting ready for a night at the club. There's another ski town that has a few nightclubs and bars, so it was reasonable to see the girls getting ready for a night out. The two girls she was with were the two we saw previously setting up their site. My wife explains that she quickly picked up on the fact that the two girls and our stalker friend were not well known to each other. It was clear that the two girls were close friends with plans to go out partying, and our stalker was making an attempt to be friends and sort of invited herself to join them in their night out. Now we know the ski town well, and the girls kept reinforcing that they were meeting at a specific restaurant before going to the bar. It was currently 10.30pm, and we know that the restaurant they were telling her to go to was closed at 10pm. They were lying to her about their plans. The stalker kept asking them too, are you sure this place? Are you sure? They convinced her, and then she then left to go to her tent to finish getting ready while the two friends stayed in the bathroom to finish their makeup. My wife went on to explain how after she left, the two friends were mocking and making fun of our stalker. They were young 20-somethings acting like little girls in an elementary school. My wife had no time for that. Creeper stalker or not, she had to say something to the girls for their behavior. My wife calls them out on their behavior. Well, putting all the Katie bitchy bullying aside, the girls explained to my wife that the stalker girl had set up her tent on the site when they were staying with a friend in the ski town. When they returned, they found her living at their site without invitation. She had just taken upon herself to take a little corner of their site without knowing them at all. The girl said that they were upset with her and trying to make her feel uncomfortable so she would leave, but she wouldn't leave. Of course, my wife asked them why they didn't just report her to the park warden. The excuse they gave was that they were leaving the next day and didn't want to make a huge deal out of it. So whatever happened between them and the fake late dinner plans and clubbing is unknown to us. About 3 a.m. the same night, we were all woken to a blood-curdling scream right outside our camper. First, I was like, holy shit, that must be a wild animal. My wife is trembling, dogs barking, and I am startled but curious. I peel back the window cover to see her standing motionless on the path outside our trailer. I had the window cover down maybe 8 to 10 centimeters when she appeared to make direct eye contact with me. My heart is jacked. What the actual fuck? After gazing in my general direction for what seemed like an eternity, she calmly turned around and walked back to her tent. I go to make sure our trailer is locked, and after a good hour and a stiff whiskey, we manage to get back to sleep. So the next day is a Friday, and we have friends from a nearby major city coming up the mountains to spend the weekend with us. We haven't seen them in a while, so we're pretty excited for a couple days together. Well, they are not at our site for 15 minutes, and as they are setting up their tent, she mysteriously appears out of nowhere yet again. Like, bam, there she is. But now this time, she is actually in our sight. I hadn't had a chance to tell our friends about her before she arrived, so they were a little more friendly than I was. She asked me once again if she could pet my dog, who during all of this was barking at her. I think I said something like, she isn't being very friendly towards you right now, so I'd prefer if you didn't. She didn't pet my dog, but she also just stood there staring at me like she was considering how she would dismember my limbs. He then notices our friend's tent brand as he is still setting it up and comments on how it's the same model as hers, although a larger sleeping capacity. My buddy has picked up on the creep vibes and my general displeasure with her presence, so just gives her the, oh yeah, cool, and keeps setting it up. Well, she starts grabbing at the tent pegs and picks up a, the hammer and says she will help him set it up because she has experience with it. My buddy declines and asks for his tools back. Cue the fucking psychopath stare down this time. She has a hammer in her hand, adding to the oh shit factor. She literally just drops everything right there and runs off. I go on to explain the last few days to her friend that they agree we need to keep an eye on her. So by this time, the two girlfriends whose site she hijacked were packed up and gone. It's on a Friday night and we've been drinking all day, so we're feeling pretty good. 
It's maybe about 11 p.m. when she walks over to our campsite again. She says, Hey, you guys seem to have a lot of extra room with the tent and the camper. Do you think I could stay with you guys? We could have a lot of fun in there together. My buddy's feeling pretty good from all the day beers he's been drinking, so he replies, Did you just propose a gangbang to us? Now this whole time I'm just sitting in my camp chair with my whiskey taking this all in. She wasn't really taking notice to me at all so far. Then, she smiles, turns her head, and looks directly down at me and says, I like your friend. She then turns around and walks away into the darkness of the night towards the forest. What the fuck? We are all now terrified that she is going to return. I decide right then and there that if we see her again in a creepy fashion, I am calling the park warden. This is getting silly. Well, the night is winding down, so we all decide to walk together to the bathrooms to clean up for bed. My wife pulls on my hoodie and says, Babe, look. I look over to see that the site she was set up on is completely destroyed. Shit everywhere. Just stuff, garbage, clothing, food everywhere. I thought, okay, this is weird. Could it have been a bear, maybe? No, we would have heard it. I then notice that the tent is gone. She has gone and left the site in a complete mess. As luck would have it, the park patrol was completing their fire rounds and were at the messed up site when we were returning from the bathrooms. We told them that there was a girl staying and who was acting erratic, and we suspected she was squatting on the site based on our conversation with the two girls from earlier in the week. We didn't see her again for the rest of our trip until last full day. There's a great little lookout point not far from our site which has amazing views of the river and valley below it, and was a perfect evening to see the sunset behind the mountains. It was a lovely final send off to an otherwise beautiful honeymoon. Just when we thought we were done with her, she emerged once again from seemingly nowhere. We were sitting on a couple chairs that are bolted in place at the viewpoint, taking pictures of the valley below. As my wife is looking through the camera viewfinder, she picks up on a woman in the distance. She is standing in the woods, a little ways down the mountain towards the valley, watching us. As a final act, she walked up on the mountainside and sat right beside us on a boulder that was beside the chairs. She said nothing, just sat there. My wife had the brilliant idea of asking me to take one last picture of the scenery, and she gives me a little wink. I pick up on our idea right away, and I position myself so the woman is going to be in the picture. My wife wanted this lady's photo in the event something bad happened with her before we could leave the area. We took our final looks out at the beautiful scenery and headed to our camp for the night. We didn't see or hear from her again. Upon reflection, we agreed this woman had some serious mental health issues, obviously. She had zero social skills, and we did witness her attempt to make friends with those two girls that shafted her in a terrible way. That being said, she did things way beyond the realm of acceptable social awkwardness. There were moments I thought she would pull out a knife and kill all of us where we stood. More than that, the stalking, the midnight screaming and running off into the woods at night was terrifying to us, and I feel a story worth of this sub. I do have a photo on a thumb drive somewhere, and we'll see about uploading a pixelated photo if it's appropriate. To anyone else, the picture just looks like a person is sitting in the shot, but to us, it's a reminder of our wild adventure and the start of our amazing marriage.